you've been in a little bit of hot waters lately, just actually a week ago. Everyone was giving you a lot of backlash over the Kobe Covington's post where you called Tyron Woodley a terrorist. What, you know, what? No, you... I was doing, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> Let's get this straight. All right. I was, I was agreeing with Kobe. Okay. Yes, BLM guys are terrorists because they're hijacked by the left. And do a little bit, follow the money and see where the money goes. You go up Antifa.com, where does it go to? Hmm, the Biden campaign. You look up BLM, all that money that they raised. So just to be clear, you dollars. weren't singling out Tyron Woodley at all. That was just for I the- I was not singling out Tyron okay. Woodley at all. I'm singling out strictly Black Lives Matter, what they're doing. They've been hijacked by the left, and I feel bad for Black America. They are really not being shown of what they truly are. All right, new day, new episode. Thank you so much for joining the Trendy Husky podcast today. We have a very, very busy, busy, busy man. Tito Ortiz, the former light heavyweight champ. The champ is here. How are you, my friend? Doing really good, man. Thank you for having me on your show. I appreciate it. Pleasure, pleasure. Thank you so much for joining in. So you are running for city council in your own city in Huntington Beach. Why, why is that? Well, um, God, there's three seats open. Um, mm -hmm. There, we have uh, a seats of seven. There's actually three Democrats and one Republican. And uh, over the last seven, fifteen to seventeen years, Huntington Beach has been dwindling more and more. Uh, homelessness has just been growing rampantly. Um, you know, the streets aren't taken care of. Just the community in general is just uh, coming to shambles. And it seems like these Democrats aren't taking care of our city. I'm born and raised here in Huntington Beach. And it's time for me to step up and start fighting for um, my community. Okay. You know, being a, a, a citizen of this uh, country and, you know, resident of Huntington Beach, I'm just going to do my duty of uh, working hard, being a team leader and uh, doing the right thing, common sense, and, you know, just fighting for the city. It's important to me, for my children and for my community. No, no, absolutely. And uh, actually, I read your autobiography, um, This Is Gonna Hurt. Uh, you wrote it back in 2008. Very good book, by the way. Um, and I saw how, you know, you talked a lot about growing up in Huntington Beach, bouncing from place to place to Santa Ana, you know, living trailer parks, garages. Did that have something to do with you getting involved in the community? 100%. You know, I want to make sure my kids have a bright future. My grandchildren, when they get old enough to have kids. And of course, uh, my everyone that lives here in Huntington Beach, just to make sure I give back. You know, my voice is heard really loud, and I want to make sure that I do it for the right reasons. And uh, the right reason right now is to make HB safe again. You know, we're in 1993, 1994, 1995, we're the safest city in America. Right now we're 50th in our state. So what's happened over the last 15, 20 years? And uh, I've been looking around and it's just, the officers aren't allowed to uh, apply the law to the homelessness. Uh, there's no place for all these guys to go. So they're actually building a facility um, to uh, take in 174 uh, homelessness people. And I really just want to, take care of our city man it's really important like i say i see the parks are just in shambles uh the streets are the pavements i mean there's just not no upkeep there's no maintenance that is done and and know, huntington beach is a beautiful city i mean i live in hb as well it's a very beautiful city to live in it, but it, you know it has its problems for sure for sure um so you've been getting a lot of hate you know for supporting donald trump I want to ask. Well, it's about changed. <laughs> it's changed a lot. Let me tell you, man. I think okay. I've opened a lot of people's eyes from the beginning when I, uh, 2016, mm -hmm. when I stepped up and I said, you know, I, I backed this guy as president because I worked for him on a celebrity apprentice in 2008, and I see what mm -hmm. type of father he was. I right. see what type of businessman he was. Now stepping up as a patriot for, and president of uh, this country, and done has done these last three years what no president has ever done, ever in our history. Proofs in the pudding. And it shows what type of man he is. And no, he's not a politician. No, he's not a polished politician. Mm -hmm. But he's a patriot of this country and cares about this country. He's willing to give up his fortunes, which he has, over a billion dollars in the last uh, three years to be president. So he, he's making some uh, headroom like uh, no president's ever done. He's making some uh, laws and just uh, the money that he's been able to raise for the uh, child um, awareness, for um, saving our children 
Mm-hmm. You know, um, it's really, really important. There's so many things that I never really understood, but I've been able to research and study over the last uh, mm-hmm. eight months that just have opened my eyes completely. You know, it went from 2016 where 70% of people call me a sellout. Uh, you know, and how can you be a sellout of your own country? But I, I well, guess it's because of everything he comes out and says all the time. He's, he, he gets a lot of backlash because of the way he talks to you. I mean, do you right. agree with everything he says, though? Not everything he says, of mm-hmm. course. I mean, not everybody has their different opinions, right. but you know, the, the solid uh, foundation of what he says, yes, I believe in it. This country needs to be saved. We need to have borders. We need to protect our military. We need to have law enforcement. You know, I am completely pro law enforcement. Uh, our, our troops need to be taken care of when they come back home. We need to pull out of the wars. Mm-hmm. The peace treaties that he's already signed and it's always been hushed, hushed from the media. This man has done many, many of things. But like I say, in 2016, 70% of my fans called me a sellout. To now, all of a sudden, we're in 2020, where 80% of my fans are like, thank you for opening my eyes. Thank you for showing me and, and being brave enough to step up no matter what people said. You can understand, I'm my own boss. So I'm, I'm able to say what I want, how I want, uh, the honest way, right. the American way, the patriotism way. And I really, really just... Uh, I believe in our president, man. I, I and I put my name on it. I put my stamp of approval myself. Let me you know, let, hardworking Mexican American kid who came from nothing and, and is living the American dream. And I don't want to lose this American dream. You know, back in 1998, uh, Obama said the American dream was no longer alive. Uh, the American dream was uh, Donald Trump. That's what Obama said. And American dream is still alive because I'm living proof of it. Okay. Let me ask you this: How did Donald Trump handle the whole COVID-19 situation? I in thought he uh, handled your eyes. it great. Well, in my, my eyes that I've seen, uh, I believe he handled it great. You know, it was in January that he did the first uh, stop of making sure that people did not come across from uh, China. But uh, people in China found a way to get them to the United States. And I, I look at the COVID numbers. They went from 170, or excuse me, 186,000 people who passed away from it. And my blessings to each one of the family members who had a lost family member from it. Uh, but to the CDC to retract their numbers is saying only 97,000 people, or excuse me, 9,700 people have uh, died from COVID-19 uh, strictly. The others had three or more underlying pre-existing um, um, problems uh, in their health. And this is something that the CDC will retract their numbers. Now, all of a sudden, Governor Newsom, he's saying, I can't make it mandatory for you to wear a mask. These guys are retracting their stuff over and over and over again where... Um, after November 3rd, you, I think we'll see the truth. I think the truth is right in front of our face. There's a lot of people who don't want to see the truth. And, you know, the numbers aren't true. If you're sick, stay home. If you feel like you're going to get sick, stay home and take medication. If you, like, once again, feel like you're getting sick, put a mask on. Now, for my children to wear a mask, I, I don't do it. Because they got to have uh, oxygen to build blood, red blood cells, mm-hmm. white blood cells to build their bodies, their muscles, their bones. Um, it's really important for the growth of a child. So put a mask on them is very harmful for their future. And I mean, this is my opinion. I'm not a doctor, but I was a physical education major mm-hmm. in college. And I understand the physiology of a body of uh, how they grow and, uh, you know, mature. And for a child to put a mask on, you know, you're lacking oxygen, which is really, really hard. You can't do that stuff to children. You know, it's a sad thing is that the Democrats and the Republicans can't even get on the same page during these sad, sad times. And, and I think that's really messed up. That's really well, you know, I, I think right now it's not about Democrats versus Republicans. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think this is about uh, tyranny versus uh, freedom. Right. It is. I mean, what has happened with the uh, Democratic Party has been hijacked by the left completely. Communists and they want socialists in this country and it has never worked. You tell me one country that socialism has ever worked. And yeah. I tell you, they've always failed. Yeah. This no. country, we, we, we have been living on freedom since 1776 and this uh, country has been great this country has been getting better and better and better and right now they're so divided man and it just it hurts me because i i I really have fought my butt off to get where i am to live this american dream Mm -hmm. and to let it just pass and and go away i mean today is voter registration day um i hope everybody goes out and uh, registers to vote and make sure on you know november 3rd you do vote um, I want to try to turn California red. I think it's really, really important. Um, That's going to be very I mean, hard. So many, it, it's going to be hard, but I think people <laughs> are opening their eyes. You know, we did a, a boat parade in Huntington uh, last week, and we had over 300 boats in the boat parade. 
and there's people who lived here in Huntington Harbor their whole life and they're like Tito we've never seen that before ever mm -hmm. well I got like I said well I hope you guys are ready for October 17th because we're going to double those numbers yeah it's a um, very blue state know, Huntington <laughs> or excuse me uh, Newport Harbor they did over uh, 1200 boats uh mm -hmm. I think they did over like uh, 2,000 boats in San Diego. So mm -hmm. it's just showing the support that uh, all these patriots that are here in uh, California, that they do support our president. And there are, you know, a few and far between that uh, dislike him. But you know, once again, he's not a politician. Yeah. It's finally time for the American people to step up, to get into politics and stop letting these politicians run this country. I mean, we've seen the polls, how they worked out for Hillary back in 2016. We see Biden, he's up in most of the polls right now. How do you see, do you see Trump pulling another uh, second upset? The second one in a row? Uh, it's not even going to be an upset. It's going to be a <laughs> landslide, a complete <laughs> landslide. You think so? You so? understand, the left control of the, of the media. Mm -hmm. They call it the control Hollywood. They call it control academia. These guys have complete control of our society and media right now. Mm -hmm. And then they can post out there whatever they want to and that's what people believe. That's what I tell people is turn off CNN, turn off Fox, go into the grassroots of the people of America and see what the truth is. See both sides. Or if you do watch CNN, make sure you watch, watch Fox and find the happy meeting between and use your common sense to know what right from wrong. Cause I know right from wrong. You know, like I say, I, I really want to have this country, not just this country, my city, but everywhere in the United States to be great, to be, to have, uh, you know, church in our schools is really important. You know, um, my son today, actually, they're in Zoom classes, and uh, he asked the teacher, he said, uh, is there any possible way we could do Pledge of Allegiance every morning? And the teacher had a big smile on her face. She said, yeah, yes, we can. We're going to start doing it every day now. So this is my son who's 11 years old, wow. and he was like, Dad, we need to start caring about our country more. I'm like, yeah. It rubbing off on you, you. I love it. <laughs> it's good because we need to focus on our children of uh, teaching them our history of how we got to this point uh, of our history of the uh, United States, man. It's important. Right. And my parents never forced uh, uh, education on me, but now I'm forcing my, my education on my children. And, you know, they're in gate classes. They're hardworking. You know, they, they have uh, chores around the house. They got to fold their own laundry, pay, take out the trash, you know, mm -hmm. um, make sure they clean up after themselves. Uh, all kinds of things that I just make sure that they work hard for it. They don't have an iPhone. They have a, a, a laptop, or excuse me, a laptop, but a, a iPad. And it, it's just uh, one of those things that I, I really just want to make sure my children have a bright future, not just uh, with education, but a bright future as men and being positive uh, people to give back to society in a positive manner you know i want to make sure i, I raise men and not just uh sheep it's important to me so the country is super divided right now with everything that's going on between you know the coronavirus between the black life matter between you know everything that's going on right now in the country how do you see this ending up how do you how see, do this, see this ending yeah. up oh, gosh trump went in by landslide people finally open their eyes and just want to see the right thing for this country um, you know, the, Demo the Democrats are destroying this country right now. You know, there's uh, Portland and, gosh, um, Chicago, New York. You know, I have a lot of friends in New York, and they said it's really bad there. When nighttime comes around, it's lawlessness. Mm -hmm. And we, we don't need this for our country. And once again, this is not a social country. It, this, it, is, this country has been built by freedom. And it, uh, we got to continue to keep our freedom. It is where I got to just the problem is Trump bringing us together. That's something I'm having a hard time with because he's not really hasn't been known for bringing anyone together. If anything, you know, kind of like been divided, divided, divided. And, our, you know, with the way Trump talks, with the way Trump is super aggressive and you kind of kind of relate with your fighting career or how you did everything. It's kind of hard to kind of think of Trump and someone who's going to bring the whole country together. Don't you agree on that? No, well, I see the country coming together more and more like no other. You know, I live here in Huntington Harbor and all of a mm -hmm. sudden I put up my America flag with my Trump flag. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden my neighbor did it and my other neighbor did it and my other neighbor. <laughs> People are starting to get the courage to step up and fight for this country. And that's what's important. Trump's not dividing people. The Democratic Party is de dividing people, showing on CNN and just nonstop hate, 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 hate. Over the last uh, three and a half years, Trump has had nothing but to defend himself. He's been defensive mode the whole time. Let's back this president the right way and be supportive of him and see what he can do when he has support of this country and not just the backlash that the Democratic Party keeps continuing to attack him with. I, I just, it makes me scratch my head. I'm just like, what do these people truly want? And it's a vicious, just being vicious and, 
and uh, lawlessness and you know, defunding the police. I mean, that is just the most terrible thing I've ever heard in my life. Defunding the police? Who are you going to call when someone comes to rob you at your home? And then all of a sudden, it's like, uh, there's going to be nobody around. No, let's not do that. Let's not defund the police. Let's reform the police. Yes, there is some bad officers out there, just like there's some bad doctors out there. There's some bad dentists out there. There's some bad teachers out there. There's some bad priests out there. I mean, there's a lot of bad people out there, but, you know, um, people are opening their eyes for once. And I think uh, people need to come together and understand that we need to fight for this country. If we don't fight for this country, we're going to lose it. And I don't want to lose the American dream, man. I don't want my kids to lose the American dream. That's why I stepped up uh, for a city council member here in Huntington Beach, because it's really, really important to me to defend the city, as I did on June 6th. You know, we had uh, Black Lives Matter in Antifa, downtown HB. And uh, the week prior, they were doing their protesting. And I had no problem with that. You have your right for your First Amendment, which is great. And then uh, all of a sudden, on the Monday after, uh, was it uh, May 29th, on that next Monday, I get a message by someone saying, I just got this direct message from somebody. They're trying to rile up uh, Antifa and Black Lives Matter come down because they didn't do it right the first time, but come back and burn this motherfucker down. <laughs> You're going to burn down my city? When I heard that, I was like, all right, cool. I can get on the phone. I got on the phone. I called like 30 of my friends, four of my special force friends. And uh, the two days before uh, June 6th, one of my friends who works for uh, the Los Angeles Sheriff Department, he came down, um, gave me a bulletproof vest, and he walked me through some uh, intel of, how they would line up, what to look out for. You know, always make sure you're watching eyes, watching hands, watch your guys dressed in black. You know, just watch uh, guys trying to flank you. And this situation did come about, and I was thankful I did do that. You know, I made a T-shirt for my uh, clothing apparel line, uh, Punishment Athletics, saying HB Strong. Mm -hmm. And I made 30 of them, actually 34 of them. And I told my friend uh, who's a police officer here in Huntington Beach that only my guys will be wearing these shirts. Nobody else will be wearing these shirts. And we're there to protect the city. Because I asked him, he said, we can't stop them from walking downtown. Right. I said, so we can stop them from walking downtown, right? He goes, Tito, we cannot stop them from walking downtown. I was like, okay, I get that in. <laughs> and we stood there, and uh, from or I, me and my friends, we stood there from 9.30 a.m. until about 7.30 p.m. I didn't have no restroom break, didn't know food break. I just had some water that uh, some of the local businesses came down to give us a big bag of waters. And um, I was thankful for that, but uh, I stood there and protected our city. You know, there's a few days before that where The Rock came out and said, President, where are you? And when they said they're going to burn down my city, I said, I got to stand up for my city. I stood down there and I stood down there for over 10 hours and I came back home and I had to go on my Instagram, which is Tito Ortiz 1999. Um, the Rock, where are you for your city? You're a multimillionaire, but you're not willing to risk yourself in your city. And I, I can understand, man, I'm a huge fan of, of Dwayne Johnson. I mean, I, I love the guy, but... For him to do that and then to come back and not to defend his own city, it just uh, made me shake my head because I was willing to take a bullet. I was willing to step up and fight for my city. And when I did that, I come to realize, you know, maybe I want to be a police officer. And uh, I was on uh, the Martha McCallum show on Fox, mm -hmm. and uh, we're talking about me being a police officer. I started doing a lot of my paperwork, and I did that show, and I came back home. Then all of a sudden, uh, about 25 messages were on my phone. They're like, no, Tito, no, 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 you don't want to be a police officer. Your hands are literally be handcuffed. You got to listen to the sergeant. And you can't do anything until he tells you what to do. And I was like, hmm. Tito can't be Tito. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I, I, he goes, you're going to put yourself in harm, uh, in harm's way. You're going to put your partner in harm's way. And you're going to put your family in harm's way. I was like, okay, I, I got to rethink this. And uh, I was like, wow, mayor of Huntington Beach. I wonder what I can do for this city. And uh, I come to realize I did my homework, did my research, and you got to be on city council member first. And then you could be appointed as mayor. So, um, I want to work as a team leader. You know, I want to help uh, get rid of this homelessness. I know we're not going to be able to get rid of it in two years, no possible way, mm -hmm. but we're able to build a facility right now that holds 174 beds where those people have to go there. If they don't go there, they don't get help. They don't go look to make themselves better. And I want them to, I want them to get better. I want them to get off of drugs, the mental health issue. I want them to get help. And this is an opportunity that Huntington Beach is building this facility to help these people. And they do need help. It's not like all of a sudden you're not going to do it. Get out, okay? Well, you got to leave. No, I want them to stay and get help to help themselves for the future and to keep this clean, this uh, city safe. To make sure that it's clean, you know, um, just for kids to walk through parks and have to worry about uh, homelessness people using drugs in front of them. Because I seen this at Edison High School across the, at the community center where guys are slamming heroin and, and uh, smoking methamphetamine. I'm just like. Wow, me growing up, the cops would be on someone so damn fast and they'd be getting beat up and um, handcuffed and taken away. And But 
the cops got their hands really cuffed. They, they can't they can't do anything. They can't even cite them. They can't do nothing. And if they do arrest and they get right out of right out on bail, there's no bail. There's no bail at all. It's just crazy how right now how the world is, but it's a test. I believe it's a test of our character of uh, America. I think it's a test of our character of each person that is a, red, a citizen of this country and a resident of Huntington Beach. And it's time for all of us to step up and do the right thing. You know, I think that's really, really important. So, Tito, city council, talking being a mayor, maybe hopefully one day, maybe president. No, you, no, no. <laughs> uh, the Trump, the, the Trump family has that taken over. You know, um, I, I, I think uh, the Trump family is doing an amazing job. They're very uh, intelligent and um, they understand, you know, the right things to do. But Trump to, family, do you see any more Trumps coming into office? I mean, yeah. as president. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I think you may be seeing Ivanka Trump the next president. Okay, mm -hmm. after Donald, huh? Okay, and possibly. <laughs> you never know. You know, uh, she's a very intelligent, articulate, smart woman who understands, uh, you know, how to run businesses, how to, you know, be a great patriot herself. So, you know, they say uh, the apples doesn't fall far from the tree, and in this uh, instance, one hundred percent, that's true. All right. Well, let's switch gears a little bit. Let's go into some sports with you. When yeah, I saw you. when I saw Mike Tyson coming out of retirement, I you know I saw he was looking for a dancing partner. I saw your name, you know, being mentioned. Did you get approached for that fight at all? Yes, I did. Um, Why I did you not take it? <laughs> I and I think I messed up. Um, I think I should have played the role of negotiation too much, and I had too much heart at the time, where I was just like, well, of course I'll have heart for the rest of my life, but. I said yes right off the bat. I mean, they didn't even ask me how much I'd be getting paid or anything. I said, I'm in, let's do this. And you understand, I, me and Mike are not close friends, but you know, we are friends. So uh, he's been to my fight when I fought in UFC 33. You know, I, I, he's came to my birthday party. I mean, he's he's a really, really good dude, but it's competition. You know, this is competition. If right. someone comes to me with a competitive side of uh, wanting to compete against another man, um, and it makes sense, uh, I'm in. And I think when I said I'm in so quick, I didn't think they expected that. I think they thought they'd use my name to kind of uh, build it more of if I was afraid to fight him. And uh, I'm not afraid to fight no man. And someone like Tyson, he brings so much to the table. I mean, he's a great father, um, a great businessman, and a great fighter. And I think we both have a lot of things in common. And it would have been a great fight, but he's fighting Roger, Roger James Jr., who's another great, great fighter. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, we'll see what happens in the future. How do you see that fight going? What's your prediction for that fight? Uh, Tyson knockout, second round. Wow. Okay. Oh, yeah. If he doesn't... He's just too, too big and too strong. He is. And, he's got a lot of power. And he's fast. And, and right now, his mind's right. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, when your mind's right, you're invincible. I, I mean, as, as myself, my last uh, six fights, I've been 5-1. Uh, I only lost the world champ, uh, Liam McGarry. But every one of my fights, I've stopped the guy in either the first round or uh, made him look really bad. And... I think I've learned a lot of my 23 year career. It's just uh, people got to understand when I first fought UFC 13, May 30th, 1997, I only trained five months before that, before I fought. Mm -hmm. I never fought before ever. I was an amateur wrestler and that was it. But as my years gone on, I mean, it took me a year and a half to become the world champion, defending my world title fought five consecutive times. I was still learning. I wasn't a great boxer. I just knew how to ground and pound and take down and be defensible in my uh, submissions. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden, over the last uh, eight or nine years, I've been able to actually add to my repertoire of you know, jujitsu and my boxing skills have been a lot better. Um, and my confidence just gets a lot better because I'm putting in long training camps. You know, when I fought Chuck Liddell the third time, I put in an 18-week training camp. When I fought Alberto Rio, I put in a 20-week training camp. And it wasn't the fact that Alberto Rio uh, – wasn't a threat to me because I didn't think of it that way. I thought him as a complete threat. I mean, him coming from the WWE, right. but he did have mixed martial art background. Right. He had amateur wrestling background. Um, I didn't want to lose to him at all. So I want to make sure I did the right work to make that happen. And I did. And I got my hand raised uh, after three minutes and 10 seconds. It was, uh, I would say, an easy fight because I trained really, really hard. I prepared for it. And there was not one rock unturned behind me um, through the whole camp. I was very, very lucky. I want to circle back on that uh, Chuck, last Chuck Liddell fight. I know it was promoted by Oscar De La Hoya. And, and, you know, I have a question about that. You know, Oscar was given a lot of crap with the McGregor Mayweather fight. It's a spit to boxing. It's whatever. He was talking a lot of shit about it. Now you hear De La Hoya might be coming out of retirement to be fighting with maybe an MMA guy. Is there a little bit of double standards with Oscar? Or how do you see that? Um, I think... 
I really think guys are just playing the fence mm -hmm. um, and they have a uh, spaghetti backbone. Okay. So they really want to flip flop to what, what's good for them financially at that point. You know, um, if, if Oscar does come back and fight, you better take it seriously because uh, anybody he does fight, it's going to take it super seriously. Uh, as a fighter, you got to understand this is our life. This is what we live. You know, I've been doing it over 23 years now and it's been my life. I, I really just dove in head first from the very beginning right. off the deep end. And uh, I fought pro guys when I was an amateur, you know, UFC mm -hmm. 13, I was an amateur. I accepted no prize money. Right. I was the only UFC fighter in UFC history to fight for free. Um, yeah. There's been a lot of guys who fought for pretty much nothing, but I fought literally for nothing. Yeah. Uh, and you, I think with the Chuck Liddell and Tito three um, fight that came about through De La Hoya's camp, I think they wanted to make us um, as uh, just a statement showing that boxing is bigger than MMA mm -hmm. and they didn't promote it right. They didn't do the things he said he was going to do. Um, there was a lot of things that he didn't do that he said he was going to do. And well, he couldn't uh, even oh, say the, the the man's name right. I mean, I'm I'm just saying. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm a perfectionist dude. I try to make right. things perfect, and I do mess up a lot. I'm human. I do make mistakes. But when you're a promoter and right. you got to promote the fighters, do your research. You see, Dana does an amazing job mm -hmm. each and every pay per view they do do. I mean, Dana shows what. A promoter is truly about in mixed martial arts he does an amazing job he's educated he understands the uh the divisiveness between all the fighters and what they can put and how they can destroy each other I and mean, he does a lot of great things as a promoter and mm -hmm. you know oscar just couldn't do that because i think he wanted to make a statement that showing that mma uh is it as big as boxing and he tried to do that with me against chuck and i think so um I looked at it. I made pretty much nothing on that fight. Mm -hmm. I did it because I had an opportunity. Chuck called me out yeah. and um, tried to embarrass me in the public, and I wasn't letting that happen. I put it in my camp. I trained. You know, there's some people saying, "Oh, Chuck was old. He shouldn't be fighting." I, yeah, I agree with you. He was old. He shouldn't be fighting. I'm old, and I should be fighting. I love it because I'm still learning. Right. And when when me and Chuck you fought, I told Chuck, "You don't want to take this fight, dude." I go, "I'm gonna stop you. You don't want to take this fight." And he goes, "Yeah, we'll see when I knock you out if you ever show up." So once again, trying to assassinate my character, uh, as he always tried to do, and I wasn't going to let that happen. You were in yeah. a much better shape than Chuck Liddell was in the last fight, for sure. I mean, I, I kind of saw him a little limping towards the fight, but I don't know. That's just me. I, like, his, his right foot was never the same, but that's just me. What's your relationship with Dana White today? Um, Not much of a relationship. Uh, I think he's kind of um, bummed out of the fact that I fought Chuck and I knocked him out. Um, and I told him that... Uh, a month before the fight uh, at uh, in Las Vegas when mm -hmm. we did the UFC Hall of Fame. I told mm -hmm. him I was going to knock him out, and he didn't like that either. But when it did happen, uh, he didn't like it. And you know, I, I wish uh, – hate's a big word, so I wish uh, hate wouldn't be there. Um, but I know he has hate towards me, and I, I just wish that uh, we can get over it, man. Uh, you know, I'm living my life right now in a positive manner. I have great people around me. I have a wonderful woman, Amber Nicole Miller, who has my back. And – is uh, literally the mother of my kids right now. You know, my two boys, Jesse and Journey, who are 11 years old, um, that are in gay classes that are very smart. And um, a lot of that, it's really, really hard work to be a parent. And for every parent out there, it is really, really hard to be mm -hmm. responsible. And yeah. uh, me and my girlfriend, Amber, we're doing that for our children. It's for the future. And the future is our, is our youth. And I got to make right. sure that we do it right. Yep. And I only got one chance to do it right. There's no do-overs of being a parent. There you go. Alrighty, you've been in a little bit of hot waters lately, just actually a week ago. Everyone's giving you a lot of backlash over the Colby Covington's post where you call Tyron Woodley a terrorist. What, you know, what? No, you... I was doing, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> Let's get this straight. All right. I was, I was agreeing with Kobe. Okay. Yes, BLM guys are terrorists because they're hijacked by the left and do a little bit, follow the money and see where the money goes. You go up Antifa.com, where does it go to? Hmm. The Biden campaign. You look at BLM, all that money that they raised. So just to be clear, you dollars. weren't singling out Tyron Woodley at all. That was just for I the... was not singling out Tyron okay. Woodley at all. I'm singling out strictly Black Lives Matter, what they're doing. They've been hijacked by the left, and I feel bad for Black America. They are really not being shown of what they truly are. Okay. You need to be... I think people need to do the research a little bit more before they go out and say BLM. And I, I, I just, once again, they say they're Marcus... They say they're socialist. They say this, and people say that's not uh, terrorist. Mm -hmm. That's terrorist on this country's floor. I mean, this American soil, we have terrorists here that are burning things down. 
and people may disagree with me, but look at Portland, look at Chicago, look at the rioting that they're doing, the killing that has been done. There's a guy here in Compton who came out and shot two cops in the face mm -hmm. that were just sitting in a cop car. And once again, it wasn't to attack uh, Tyrone Woodley at all. I just was stating a fact, plain fact, plain and simple. These are terrorists of our country right now. It's not that Black Lives Matter, you know, all lives should matter. And it's kind of funny because on Father's Day, I was sitting with my sons watching Nickelodeon and it said, Black Fathers Matter. My son looks at me without me saying a word. My son looks at me and goes, Dad, I thought all fathers matter. <laughs> you get it, son. People are trying to have their own agenda, trying to spread their own information and trying to get rid of our history. And it's just, it's sad because there's a lot of confused kids out there. I don't get the right thing. I don't get to, to understand the right stuff the right way because of media, of how it's being controlled. And like I say, I know Tyrone Woodley. And I was like, man, I hope you got paid for this. I really do. I hope you got paid to wear that BLM. For doing the press conference saying BLM matters. BLM, BLM, BLM. I was like, I'm hoping he's getting paid for this. I don't think he's getting there's... paid for it. I, I don't think he's getting paid for it. I think he's just a stand. Kind of just like what Kobe does with Trump and wearing the mega hatch all the time and stuff. I yeah, think... but no, you don't see any guys in Trump going out destroying America. When do you ever see anybody wearing a Trump hat or Trump t-shirt going out destroying America? There, Not one. There has been problems you see guys, you know, with, the and, with the Antifa MAGA people. And, there has been. Yeah, you don't see those guys doing that. We're trying to come together as Americans bring, to bring each other and open each other's eyes. But there's people that are so ignorant to the facts in front of them that they don't want to hear the truth because they don't want to say that they're wrong. And this is my opinion once right, again. Right. And I, I have everything to lose to, in this factory because I, I I do do stuff in Hollywood, but you know what? When the dust settles and November 3rd goes by, I want to see who's still standing, who's still a true patriot of this country because there's been so many Americans that have lost their soul, excuse me, have lost their lives uh, for this country, fighting for this country, fighting for the future of this country, that we need to stand for this flag. We need to say the Pledge of Allegiance. We need to say these things because it gives them hope when they're across seas or Middle East or, you know, away from their families to sacrifice their time, to sacrifice their lives for this country, they gotta make sure that they're making it worth their time and worth their lives. And the reason I say this, because I've been in Iraq six times. I went from 2005 to 2011. I was there during the winter when it was uh, um, 15 degrees. And I've been there in the summer when it was 130 degrees. And I was there to boost the morale of our troops. And there was times that I sat down with kids and they're 18 years old, little young kids and they're like, man, I don't know who the enemy is. There's people will like run around with guns and until they point the guns at us, we can't do nothing. Guys getting hit by IEDs coming back when I went to Walter Reed and Bethesda and, and DC with missing legs and missing arms are like, I can't wait to get my, my new arms and get back and fight with my brother and sisters. This is what America is so proud of their country. They're willing to risk their lives and sacrifice their lives for our country. And I think people have really lost that over the last, uh, 15 years. I think, uh, you know, what the Clintons have done, what Obama has done, and uh, they have pulled church out of our schools. They've taken a, a family um, heart that really we need to think about is not separating from the family. The family is really important. We got to keep our families together. And when we have our families together, you really have a, a nuclear family where, you know, I'm I'm not a person to go to church, but I believe in God. You know, I, I, I believe in doing the right thing. I believe in teaching my kids respect and values, uh, opening doors for women, saying, thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Shaking people's hands, looking straight in the eyes. And this is my, my chance of being a great father because I never had a father. Mm -hmm. And it was hard. It was hard growing up because I always tried to fit in. You know, either I was a right. wetback or I was a white boy beaner or I mean, a white boy or a honky or a border jumper. I mean, it would toss and turn. Whoever I was hanging out with, that's the person I was. So I was always confused as a kid growing up. But now I truly know about it, and I'm an American. Mm. Uh, I was born and raised here in Huntington Beach. I'm an American, and I'm going to fight for these values. I'm going to fight for the values for my children. I'm going to fight for the values for my community and for um, all my constituents here in America. I think it's important that we fight for our values. All right, going back to sports. All right, going back to sports. I know we keep getting dragged down in politics. Nice. You're it's, the one I, I know it was I'm my fault. You. I'm not. <laughs> I'm it was my. You. I'm giving you answers. It, it was. It was my fault on that one. All right, going back to to sports. John Jones, semi-retired. You know, he, if you're if you're John Jones, and I know we've been in his spot before, light heavyweight champion, everything. Do you wait for a super fight versus maybe a Brock Lesnar or Adesanya 
or do you go up a division and you try to actually fight and empty the heavyweight division? What do you um, do if you're John Jones? I think John Jones should stay in his way and just continue dominating. But I know it's a uh, contract negotiation stuff right now. Mm -hmm. I've been th through the same thing myself yep. through my career uh, with UFC, mm -hmm. and he's got to stand his ground. He's one of the best uh, light heavyweights to ever grace the octagon in the history of mixed martial arts, uh, plain and simple. Mm -hmm. He is the best. Right. But he just needs to get his stuff together and make right. sure that he makes the right decision for his future. Yeah. I mean, I love John Jones. I think John Jones is a great guy. He makes mistakes. He's human. Mm -hmm. um, you got to watch who you associate yourself with because all of a sudden you become those people and you don't want to become those people. Like I said, he's made mistakes, but he is one of the greatest light heavyweights ever. And I, I, will, I will say that for sure, 100%. All right. We know you're a big pro wrestling fan. Do we see maybe, I don't know if Vince McMahon decides to pick up the phone and he's like, hey, Tito, I want to see you with Chell Sonnen in WrestleMania. Would you take that that card? Oh, yeah. See, if that, that, well, you just said a, a name that I don't think it would be a wrestling match. It would literally be a fight because I punch <laughs> that guy in his face. I don't like that guy. Um, he is one of the I, best I, trash talkers ever, though. Ever. <laughs> yeah, but that's about it. That's all he's ever done for his career is uh, made money from his mouth, literally. Um, <laughs> you know, what, what about the professional wrestling uh, situation? Uh, Vince, Vince or excuse me, uh, Shane McMahon reached out to me. I went and trained with them uh, mm -hmm. back in February, and it was an amazing uh, two weeks I was there. I learned so much when I was in Orlando. The, uh, the trainers there are amazing. Um, you know, I learned so much in such a quick amount of time. The guys are like, Tito, you're learning stuff that guy's taking six to eight months to learn. He goes, you learn really, really quick. I go, well, that's how I got on varsity my freshman year when I never wrestled before. And that's how I became the world champion in MMA after a year and a half of competition. You know, that's how I've, I've been able to live the life I have through hard work and dedication, just dedicate myself to it 100%. And, I did that when I was there. So the door hopefully is always open. Uh, I think right now with this COVID pandemic uh, right. is kind of in the way of a lot of things with sports right now. Um, and just for business, you know, um, I, I just really, hopefully it goes away and that door will be wide open where I'm able to walk through it and be accepted uh, from the WWE universe. I mean, I've always been a fan. My kids are fans uh, and I would love to compete. You're a great trash talker. You should be in the WWE. It's all, you know, it's a lot of trash talking and stuff. I think you'd be great at it. I think I'd yeah, love it. Yeah, timing's everything. It's all about timing. Yep. Timing's everything, and I get it. And I'll just sit back and keep doing cool. the work I'm doing right now. And uh, when things happen, uh, they'll happen, and, and I'll work for it. All right. Um, do you ever get calls from maybe the young talent in the roster in any division asking you for advice or anything? from the uh, UFC yeah, or Bellator right now? There's a lot of guys that I see uh, out and about, you know, going to dinner or so forth. You know, Henry Cejudo is one of the guys that I've seen. And, uh, you know, I just say you got to understand what you're worth, man. You got to make sure everything's in black and white on a contract. Don't ever do anything by what people say, uh, you know, they're going to do for you. Just make sure it's always in black and white. And, and always respect yourself, you know. And at the end of the day is have respect for yourself, have integrity for yourself. And it's really, really important. And, um, you know, I, I think, as I look at my career, I made a lot of mistakes, um, but I made those mistakes uh, to learn from, mm -hmm. and I learned from them super fast. Um, but a lot of guys do reach out to me, you know, just business-wise. I'm saying, guys, you got to understand, what are you going to do when you're 40, 45 years old? And hopefully not still fighting. Right. And uh, Unless you love it as much as I do, because right. I still love it. I still have one more fight left with uh, Combat the Americas, and mm -hmm. um, next year I, I think they'll be able to do the fight. And I'm, I'm just... Um, I think I have learned so much that I'm able to give a lot of information to young fighters that are up and comers, you know, just uh, work hard and do the right thing and always have an open mind, always be willing to learn from others uh, and learn from others' mistakes and try not to copy those mistakes, but try to copy the positive things, you know. I think of myself as really not a, a, a role model, but more of an inspiration. I want people to be inspired by the great things I've done through my life because I could have been another statistic of uh, being in prison or dead, and right. I wasn't. I, I made that second uh, that second chance in life where I want to make something great of myself, and I've been able to do that with a little bit of help of some of my friends and my family. And uh, I, I really just work hard. You know, I'm a hard worker, and I try to do the right thing for myself. So when I brush my teeth at night before I go to bed, I look in the mirror, and I can be respectful for myself that I have integrity that I, I've helped somebody else, uh, either it's a fan or a child or a kid or, you know, another fighter or someone that's in business having a hard time or just a soldier coming back from war, you know, mm -hmm. or someone that's there in war right now. Um, 
to show them that America has their back no matter what, that America, the American dream is still alive, it is not dead, it is alive and it's flourishing and we just get to work for it and with no handouts. Just go out and work your butt off and make it happen. All right, Chiro. Well, thank you so much for coming in the show. Please take over the mic, say whatever you want to your fans out there um, and the people who are voting this November in Huntington Beach and in America in general. Go ahead, Chiro. Mike is yours, brother. You know, I just want to say thanks. Thank you to everyone who's given me support up to this point uh, with my campaign, Tito, for HBCC. Um, people who have donated, and I've been getting donations from Canada, all across the United States, uh, Mexico. Um, it's been amazing. Of course, you can go to Tito for HBCC.com um, to donate, to help with my campaign. This pays for all the signage, um, just uh, to help not really get my name out there, but just uh, spread my, my word, you know, and make sure you guys get out on November 3rd and vote. I'm number eight on the ballot in Huntington Beach. If you live here in Huntington Beach, and uh, I just want to make HB safe again. And I'm not telling you for what president to vote for, but uh, go out there and vote. And look at it black and white and see what you see the truth. And hopefully the truth will set us all free. And it's very important because we the people need to come together and make this happen because this is the biggest election in my history of living on this earth, of my parents' uh, history of living on this earth, and my grandparents living this uh, on this earth. And... This is the biggest one of our lifetime, man, and it means the world. So for the future of our children, for the future of our country, for the future of everyone who lives in America, please go out and vote on November 3rd. It's very, very, very important. I mean, I can't say very enough times because it is so damn important. Please, you know what, like I say, All right. we need to uh, do the right thing for America, man. It's very important. All right, and if you want to follow Tito, we will have his Instagram, Twitter, and everything about Tito in the description below. Thank you so much, Tito. Thank you for everyone watching. If you haven't subscribed to our show, please go and subscribe to Trendy Husky Podcast. Thank you so much, and this is a wrap.